last night I barely got any sleep at all because we have an apocalyptic situation going on right here in Florida. I tweeted about it a little bit. Um, and it is terrifying. Basically, there are termite swarms in Florida. We had these in South Louisiana, but I kind of forgot about it. I kind of forgot how bad it was. It's termite storm swarms. So what this is, is like, uh, we have a community chat for my neighborhood. And, uh, and in my community page, like our community chat for our neighborhood, it's like apocalypse prep. People are like, there is no way to keep them from coming inside. They will get in through your hood range above your stove, bathroom vents, and ridge vents in your attic. There is no treatment. Any bug spray will kill them, but they will come back. It is gonna be okay. We know it's scary, but it, it will pass. Just stay strong. That's literally what it says, like word for word. In our in our chat. And last night, uh I looked out the kitchen window, right? I tried to look out the kitchen window and you could not see out of the window because it's completely covered in bugs like blanketed in bugs where you can't see any anything any glass at all because of the swarm and they were like managing to get in and just flying around they were swarming around there was a few of them swarming around the front door and then um, people are like okay what do i do and they say what you have to do is turn off every light like every single light it needs to be off like your any light that you absolutely do not need right now needs to be off like oven light off microwave light off any light that's coming from the inside of your house needs to be turned off and so yeah you basically just have to hide in total darkness while this is going on <laughs> and um it's quite terrifying. It's like a horror movie because last night, like everything is in total darkness and I just have my phone. I need to like get up to go to the bathroom <laughs> at night. And I'm like, <laughs> my little phone light. <laughs> I'm like, oh God, they could be anywhere. <laughs> I go into the bathroom. I look, I see some in the sink that are dead. Oh god. They also say there can't be any source sources of moisture anywhere in your home. So like if you brush your teeth, right? If you wash your face or something, you need to dry the sink so that there's no water just sitting there. Because they have a weakness. The weakness is that they have 45 minutes to find a food source. I mean, to find a, a moisture source or mate. And if they don't do that in 45 minutes, they'll die. This is the only advantage that we have against the monsters. So basically, most of them die very quickly once they're in. Where do you live? <laughs> in Egypt? <laughs> when Moses was alive? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, basically. Where Zeppelin goes. Catastrophes follow. Don't sleep with your mouth open. <laughs> well, I have one saving grace, and it is my cat. Thankfully, my cat is hunting these things. So, like... I slept with the kitty cat close to me last night and I felt like protected because she's sitting, I'm sleeping and she's uh, sitting by my, she always sleeps next to my legs. And so she's like fucking guarding me all night. Maybe, maybe that's why they worship the cats in Egypt, right? To help them with this, uh, the, the plagues. Tula to the rescue. <laughs> Uh, the termites were the reason you couldn't sleep. Yes. Yeah. It's okay. It's fine. It's not that big of a deal. Like, at least I'm not scared of them. 
I'm, even though like I'm not scared of them, but when it's when you are in total darkness and you don't know where they are, I think that's scary for anybody. You know. <laughs> the Tula's gonna gain thirty pounds. Yeah. How is Tula doing? Is she adjusting a bit better? Tula is doing amazing now. As you know, when we first got here, she was really scared and bothered. Um, but, uh, and like she ran away and we literally within five minutes of arriving at the house, she ran out the door and we couldn't find her. It was a whole scary thing, but now she's acting completely normally again. And so she does this now, you know, if we open the door coming in or out, she just says, oh, hey, what's up? Looks out and, you know, runs back to her food bowl because usually after I walk Nora, you know, I feed her. Uh, so yeah, she's back to completely normal behavior, not darting out the door. Uh, anytime it is open, she doesn't really want to do that. So I'm, I'm happy to say she's doing great. Yeah. <clears throat> Can't you close all the lights but open a window so they'll leave to find a light source? No, it won't work because it's Florida. You can't leave any window open at night without like a hardcore screen on it. Because it's not the only bug that's outside. <laughs> but here's another thing I got going for me, right? The neighbor across the street is not doing this smart. The neighbor across the street is not like handling the apocalypse very well. The neighbor across the street has all of their f***ing on, on the outside of their house and the inside of their house. And this is actually really good for me. It's horrible for them. <laughs> but it's amazing news for me because it means that all of the bugs are going to their house instead. <laughs> yeah, like I felt bad last night because last night I'm looking out and I'm like, oh, but... <laughs> How convenient <laughs> me. <laughs> and now I have a moral dilemma, right? The moral dilemma is like, should I tell my neighbor, hey, you should probably not <laughs> turn off all your, you should probably turn off all your light, or, you know, <laughs> say nothing. <laughs> Top tier bait. They probably got used to it and gave up caring. Maybe so, it's a old. it's old people. It's old people, so I think you're completely right. We have frogs that hang out around our front door at night because we have our front door light on and they eat the love bugs. Oh, well, there's uh, bats and they, I have spiders that are working hard. But the spiders, even though they are, they're catching them, they're eating them, they're doing a good job. There's only so many. Speaking of Florida, uh, I wanted to t sh show you something cool. I went to a alligator sanctuary the other day. And, uh, it was pretty amazing. But it was, it was actually in Alabama. But, it, I mean, it's basically where I'm at. It, these, Alabama and Florida are basically the same. But I want to show you some cool pics from uh, the alligator sanctuary. Look how cool these guys are. Look how cool that guy is. He's massive. This is actually not even close to being the biggest alligator that I've seen there. He was chilling. He was chonker. Yeah. Uh, I also... Oh, I recorded the guy there talking about the alligators. Let me see if I can find it. I won't play a lot, just a little bit, because it was very entertaining. It was very Alabama. It was like maybe too Alabama for some of y'all. <laughs> PSI. With that. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, I found it. Okay. Balance per square Wait. inch thrown out there to make that... things sound more impressive. Oh, is anyone with some ribs to cook, by the way? And these are pretty good. Um. 2,000 PSI is about like taking a pen and you sign a piece of paper. So 2,000 PSI is not impressive. So force is like actual weight. He so, was feeding them like puppies. On, sweetheart. You, can one of y'all jump in and give her a boost? Up over the wall. 
Uh, but force is equivalent to weight. So if you could imagine having a car dropped on your head from about two feet off the ground, that would be sort of the equivalent of a guy like Chili Dog biting you. Now, if that happens, I'm real sorry. Hopefully it won't. Uh, but alligators are not endurance animals. Uh, they're an anaerobic animal, which means they build up lactic acid very fast. So they cannot sustain that bite forever. This is uh, very they interesting. They have about a 20 minute time period. So after 20 minutes, they get tired, they let go. You can keep swimming. But, yep. Um, in that 20 minute time period, again, most animals. They're you know, only gonna hold on for about 20 minutes. They quit kicking a whole lot sooner than that. If you would like to base it on a pressure format, uh, we can talk about Captain Crunch. For Basically, instance. he's like Alabama uh, Steve Irwin. I'm serious. He's certified at 2,982 pounds of force. In he's like Alabama Steve Irwin. Oh, here's another one. Yeah, Chili Dog did happen to get his jaws into some. Chili Dog, get over here. Come on. I'll get him to walk front and center. Uh, because small <laughs> alligators like, let's see, that little fella, right? Fetch. <laughs> oh, that little guy's a little bigger, but. You know, at six to seven feet, these animals have a bite. Come on, Chili, get over here. That averages around four to 500 pounds of force. Now, arms and legs on people break at about 450. Could a six to seven foot alligator break your arm? No, but he would borrow some toes and fingers and things like that. Oh my God, it's great. PSI, when he did this experience part. thrown out there. Based any part of the pig. Um, you're probably wondering, you know, why we don't feed the pig whole. Um, Hydrochloric yeah. acid, as powerful as it is, is not very efficient. As a matter of anyway, fact, it's just anyway. I don't need to show you the whole thing. I just wanted to show you like what what I did over the weekend. Eat the wild deer and things like that. They have really fine hair, so it doesn't cause any problem. Yep. Now he's he's a legs man too. He's <laughs> gonna swallow that whole. Oh, don't you spit that leg out. This was fun. All right. Well, I've got one more piece. Um, Honestly, they're, they're pretty lazy. The meanest alligator showed up today, but she's actually behaving herself. Um, she is sitting in the corner. Okay. Uh, you should check out Chandler's Wildlife on YouTube. Florida guy who started his own alligator slash venomous snake zoo. He's adorable and entertaining. You know, one of them went, they, they can go a really long time without eating. They don't actually need that much food. It's pretty crazy. And alligators are actually pretty relaxed. I mean, I know about them already because I grew up in Louisiana, but uh, like we had alligator in my grandpa's backyard who never bothered us, but it's also something like, you know, we didn't go, we didn't tempt fate. You know, we didn't go out there without supervision as children. Okay, like you need to exercise a little bit of common sense with it.